For the longsword, running in means rushing in past the enemy's weapon and getting closer to the opponent in order to wrestle, throw, do a pommel strike, etc. This basically applies to all weapons, but with pole arms it can also mean to get closer to the enemy in order to continue to make basic attacks. The sheer length allows us to safely continue with range attacks once one has passed the weapon while staying far enough away so that the enemy cannot apply any wrestling techniques. The reason for this can vary. Either you seize an opportunity because you simply expect an advantage from it, or if you consider the context of the field battle, the pressure of the ranks behind you is so great that you have no choice but to approach the enemy. With weapons that are much shorter than the pike, running in is an essential part of mixed weapon fencing. Here the carrier of the shorter weapons has no choice but to run in to get past the longer weapon. In four examples with different weapons we try to work out some basic concepts against the extremely long pike. With a saber or dusak you can run in well with a bit of skill and ability to react. To do this, the blade must be stretched out in an arc-like guard. Then we grab through the arc to the pike in order to control it. This idea is based on a grip position that we find in an Italian manuscript by Maroso. The lever is ideal for keeping the pike at a distance and then running in. There are many ways to enter with the halberd. Joachim Meyer shows us one of them in his manuscript from 5061. Here, the pole is carried high above the head in a parry in order to then bring the deadly axe blade to the pikeman. We have two examples for the pike. A simple way would be to run in after the opponent's pike has been lifted up and then we attack with the rear end. The second one will be the following. With the pike at a high parry, we grab with the back hand in the middle, past the front hand. This requires some skill, especially with regards to the quick grip changes. If this succeeds, however, we will be in a very advantage position for a thrust. Of course, there is a big difference between trying to run into the pikeman in a duel or in the dense crowd of a battle. But these are of course extremes, of which then are also intermediate stages. In addition, it could also be that the pikeman takes a sidearm and drops the pike, etc. These are all variables that are difficult to practice all at once. Basically, 
It is important to first look at the basic concepts before dealing with chaotic situations. The techniques shown here all come from experienced masters of their art. Generally, they do demonstrate their techniques in dual situation. Of course, many other ways how to get to the pikeman can be worked out. However, I can always recommend looking into the sources first and then trying out your own ideas based on the given concepts.